sure? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Uh, yes, Kansas. Uh, that's excellent. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Matt McDonald, the Assistant Athletic Director for Communications at Northeastern. And on behalf of Northeastern Athletics and the Northeastern Baseball family, I'd like to welcome members of the media, our guests, and those of you watching the live stream of today's event for what is an exciting day for North Northeastern Athletics and our baseball program. Today, for the first time in three decades, and for just the fourth time in nearly 60 years, we introduce a new baseball head coach. We will take questions following today's announcement for all three of our guests. And for those of you watching the live stream, you may tweet your questions using hashtag GoNU, and we will try to include those as well. In August, longtime head coach Neil McPhee announced that he will retire following the 2014 season, his 29th as head coach. During the last 28 years, Neil has guided our baseball program to 19 winning seasons, 16 postseason appearances, and five conference titles. He was a two-sport standout as a student at Northeastern, and he's a member of our Hall of Fame, and we greatly appreciate all that Neil has done. We are excited that the next head coach of Northeastern baseball is, again, one of our own, current assistant coach Mike Glavin. Mike is a Northeastern alumnus who achieved great success as a student athlete. He enjoyed a 10-year professional baseball career and returned in 2007 as an assistant coach. He has helped to spur our growing momentum since his return, which culminated in a 31-win campaign a beanpot title, and a dramatic march to the semifinals of the CAA championship last season. We will hear from Mike shortly, but now it's my honor to welcome to the podium Director of Athletics, Peter Roby. Thank you, Matt. I uh, appreciate all your help and support in, in making this day a reality. And thanks to everybody for being here in support of, of Mike. Uh, on this really special day for him and his family, uh, and uh, for the, the special day for Northeastern baseball. Um, let me also uh, be sure to thank uh, Coach McPhee for uh, his 28 years and going to be 29 years of service as the head baseball coach at Northeastern uh, for his leadership and his uh, commitment to Northeastern as an institution and to the baseball program in particular. Uh, but his association with Northeastern goes well beyond his 29 years as a head coach, uh, as Matt uh, already alluded to. And it's particularly um, uh, fun for me to think that um, we have this opportunity to continue a legacy that started with Tinker Conley. And we are uh, sad about uh, Coach Conley's passing, wish he could be here with us today. But his fingerprints are all over today. And I want to make sure that I uh, don't go any further without mentioning Tinker uh, in this setting because, uh, like Neil, uh, Coach Conley was a multi-sport athlete at Northeastern, someone highly respected that uh, helped to create the legacy of Northeastern baseball, having been the head coach for over 20 years. And Neil McPhee played for Coach Conley. And now we have a chance to pass the torch again in a similar fashion with one Hall of Famer having played for another who shares the same commitment uh, to the institution, uh, a passion and love for Northeastern baseball, and no one that could better represent uh, what Northeastern baseball is about and the values of the Northeastern Athletic Department uh, than Mike Glavin. Um, when Neil and I talked about this being his final season, one of the things that Coach had had uh, asked me to consider was uh, the timing around the announcement uh, so that it would be uh, uh, as uh, smooth a transition as possible, that it would allow for the next coach to be able to uh, continue to recruit uh, an incoming class without any real interruption uh, so that the sooner we could do that, the better it would be for the program. And I certainly concurred with that. And as a result, of Neil um, allowing us to get ahead of it by letting us know what his, his plans were, we could set in motion uh, the search. 
And so after talking with numerous people in baseball, in New England, people that have had a lot of connection to Northeastern baseball, it became very clear to me uh, that no one would better represent what it is we care most about uh, than Mike Glavin. Uh, Mike's had a, uh, uh, a fabulous career both here at Northeastern and in professional baseball. So he knows the game, he can teach the game technically, uh, and he relates really well with our players. Uh, the sentiments of our graduating seniors was that uh, no one would better represent Northeastern baseball than Mike Glavin. I know our current players that are sitting here uh, today are extremely excited about the fact that someone that they've come to know and respect is going to continue uh, to lead our baseball program. So on behalf of all of us in the athletic department and for all of those that care deeply about Northeastern baseball, uh, please join me in welcoming the next baseball coach at Northeastern University, Mike Glad. First, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. This is an um, exciting day for me and my family. And um, on a day like today, I think the biggest thing to do is, is make sure that uh, I thank everyone that's responsible for me being up here today. And, um, and first, I want to thank Peter uh, for giving me this opportunity and for believing in me and for taking over for two, two heavyweights in the coaching industry, and, and Coach Tinker and Coach McPhee. And, and Peter has been um, just tremendous through this whole process with me and, and, and with the interviews and, and giving me advice and giving me this opportunity. And um, for him to believe in me to take over for coach is, is, is just a great feeling. And Peter, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. Um, for a day like today also, we're, I guess we're announcing me as the next head coach, but um, I don't want to take anything away from what Coach McPhee has done with this program and, and still make sure that the spotlight is on him and understand that he is still the head coach of this program and he has built this program in so many ways and in so many ways that I don't even really know because I wasn't here when he started and, and our current players as well. But the amount of things that Coach has done for this program from the start of his coaching career till now are immeasurable. And he has been the face of this program for so long, as, as Peter said, he's a, a Hall of Famer here as a player and certainly could be the same as a coach and has done so much for this program and putting us in the position that we're in today. And um, as I had mentioned the other day to him, but coach gave me an opportunity as a player way back when, when other coaches didn't and, and other coaches didn't believe in me and coach gave me a shot and, and I am forever thankful for that. And then in 2007, as Peter said, he gave me another opportunity as a volunteer coach. And I didn't really know what I was getting into other than I loved Northeastern. I played there and yeah, I love baseball. Yeah, sure, why not, coach? And it fit my schedule at that time. And, and from that point, I never, never thought about this day at that point. All I thought about was trying to survive and, and learn the game a little more and get back into the college game. And, and then to, to be at this point now, and, and take all of Coach's advice that he's given me since 2007 as a coach, as a volunteer coach, and, and have all the, the freedoms that he's given me to learn, to be the coach that I am today, to learn how my personality is going to be with the guys, to learn how to run practices and everything that goes into being a head coach. Um, what he's given me these last seven, eight years um, to prepare me for this, I'll, I'll forever be thankful for. So, Coach, I can't thank you enough for all the help and getting me here today as a player and now as a coach. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I also want to thank my family, my parents, my wife, my children. Um, any coach here knows the amount of time and effort that goes into being a coach and the amount of hours, the travel, and the, the time away from home and, and being away from your family. And, um, I know my parents are watching my little one right now, they're watching Luke, so um, the amount that you rely on them, the amount that you're away, um, the amount that I'm away from my children and wife is, 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 is a lot. And 
to have them be able to take care of everything and, and to make sure that I'm, I'm able to spend enough time with the team is, is, is so helpful. And I can't thank them enough for putting up with, again, all the travel and, and all the time away that's involved in being, being a baseball coach. And um, I want to thank, again, everybody that came out here today. Um, there's a lot of friendly faces out here today and a lot of people that, that go back with me way back when, when I was a student here. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of great people involved with this university and, and, and a lot of people that I owe a, a great amount of thank yous to and, and uh, are responsible in some way for having me up here today as well. So uh, I want to thank, again, everybody for coming out today. It's pretty humbling and, and I appreciate and I'm thankful for all the help that you've given me along the way. Um, you know, and just, and just lastly, <clears throat> the last couple of things I want to just get across, and I said this to the players a little while ago, is this is where I want to be. You know, I was a student here at one point, now a coach, didn't want to go anywhere else. I've turned down other opportunities to stay here. This is where I want to be. I love the college game. I love college baseball. I love this university. And it's given me so much, this university has given me so much as a student athlete and now as a, as a potential head coach down the road here in a year and what they've given, it's given me so much as an assistant coach up until this point and it's finally time for me to give back to the university. So uh, I am honored by this, I am humbled and I'm extremely appreciative for this opportunity and I look forward to where this program is going to head in the future and building on everything that coach has done that Tinker has done. This university is taken off so much, you know, 49th now academically. The campus is, is gorgeous. The facilities are first rate. And there's no reason why the success of this team can't continue to grow and get on the national stage like our university. So uh, I'm really looking forward to the challenge. And, and again, I can't thank everybody enough for, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. We'll now open it up to questions. And again, those of you watching on the live stream, tweet at us using hashtag GoNU, and we'll try to incorporate your questions as well. Uh, but for those of you with us today, questions? Don't all jump at once. OK, I'll open it then. Uh, Neil, uh, almost five decades associated with this university, a uh, student uh, and a coach. What does it mean to you uh, to have one of your former players named the successor? I couldn't be happier for Mike. This is his day. Um, and as has been stated previously, I am absolutely thrilled that the head coaching position is going to be passed on to an alumnus here. It does carry on what seems to be a long, long tradition. And, and I think most of the older gentlemen and people in this room here realize you know, what Tinker Conley meant to Northeastern, what he meant to me, and I was, had, took, took so much pride in following him, and now Mike, I think we'll see, feel that same pride uh, in his alma mater for a long, long time to come. So it's, a, it's absolutely a celebration for me as well to see uh, Mike um, step to the uh, podium and take this position. Uh, Peter, and I'll open this up to everybody, actually. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about Tinker today. Tinker was a multi-sport athlete uh, here at Northeastern, an alumnus, 26-year tenure as head coach. Neil, a two-sport standout, um, a 29-year tenure as head coach, and, and now we're here to, to welcome a, another alumnus to the role of head coach. What do you think that says about uh, the university, about the department, and specifically about the baseball program? Um, you know, th that, that legacy of, of former Northeastern players coaching? Well, I think it speaks to um, how this place uh, creates a special relationship, especially with their students. Um, I can't tell you how many alums that I've come in contact with, whether they were former student athletes or just uh, from the general student population that graduated from Northeastern, and talk about how much the university meant to them and how much it gave them an opportunity and in some cases gave them an opportunity when other institutions wouldn't give them an opportunity. So there's, a, there's an amazing gratitude that I hear from people associated with Northeastern. 
And so, um, you know, part of the reason that I think you have uh, people like Coach Conley and, and Neil who want to be associated with Northeastern is because of the way they feel about the opportunities that were provided to them. And it's a way of, of giving, that, giving that back to all those students that they come in contact with to continue to, to talk and promote the university to alumni and others that'll listen. And we're so proud of what Northeastern has become, what it's done for us. And I'm, I'm proud to be a parent of a Northeastern graduate. I'm proud to have a degree from Northeastern. I'm proud to be associated with Northeastern people like these two gentlemen up here. So, you know, that, that just played a lot of, that, that played a big factor for me in trying to figure out what was the, in the best interest of the baseball program going forward. And it just couldn't be about someone that knew baseball. It had to be someone that knew Northeastern who cared about Northeastern, that would take pride in its brand and what it represented, uh, that wouldn't necessarily be thinking about using this as a stepping stone to go somewhere else. But we're committed to making sure that people don't come here thinking that this is just uh, you know, a stepping stone to somewhere else. We, we feel like this is, a, this is a destination. And I think Mike put it as well as, as anybody could. He loves Northeastern and, and he wants to be here. And that made a big difference for me and, and I couldn't be more excited about him being here. Questions from anyone else? <laughs> the question for, for, for our viewers at home, the question was, uh, what was it like to coach Mike back in the day? <laughs> uh, I guess it was like coaching all the rest of these guys. They were all, they were, they were, they were all afraid of me. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, he was a classic left, left first baseman. Um, obviously, the Glavin name uh, uh, is one synonymous with baseball greatness. Uh, and Mike fulfilled that here. One of the things I just mentioned to Peter was uh, I, he came in here as a six foot five, tall, left handed, gangly guy and went out just a six foot five, 220 pound, you know, ripped uh, power hitting first baseman and had 10 great years in the, in the minor leagues and made it all the way to the big leagues. Uh, just a, you know, the absolute epitome of an athlete that you want in a program. Jim, Jim. No, that was not a plant. We didn't plant him to, uh, to ask that question. The question was, what's the status of the, uh, the pavilion project that we hope to build with a viewing box uh, behind home plate? So our, our goal for the program is to uh, finish the beautiful renovations that have taken place over the last two years at, at Parsons Field and Friedman Diamond. Uh, by adding a um, kind of a reserve seating section, if you will, to fill in behind home plate from almost from dugout to dugout. We feel like that project will really solidify our program as one of the best uh, with, with some of the best facilities uh, on the East Coast. Uh, so we actually just met with a group of, um, of excited and enthusiastic alumni uh, from the baseball program just this Saturday evening to roll out that program and, and get their uh, help and support. Uh, and we're out now raising uh, monies for that project. We're about halfway to the goal that we need to, uh, to move on the project. And our goal is to have that seating pavilion and viewing box ready for the 2015 season. Uh, so uh, uh, anything that you want to do, Jim, to uh, help <laughs> us get to that goal, we're more than appreciative. So, OK, great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're really excited about that, and, and we feel like that, along with this transition, along with the investments in the scholarships that we've made to get to the NCAA maximum, uh, as well as the resurfacing of, uh, of Friedman Diamond, uh, will complete what we feel like we need to, uh, to put the program in a position to compete on an annual basis with some of the best programs in the country. The facilities question is a popular one. Michael Black asked the same question on Twitter, so okay. thanks for addressing that. Any other questions? Cash. So the question was, uh, what you think the, the biggest transition will be from assistant coach to head coach? I think, you know, I, I guess in overall the biggest challenge is, is coaching a warm weather sport in the Northeast and, and, and recruiting players to come here and play and getting our message across as to why they should come to Northeastern and 
and, and letting them understand not only how, how great this school is academically, showing them the campus, but also getting the word out and how talented our team is, how good th these guys are, how good this conference is. It was eighth ranked conference in, in some polls last year out of 32. It's outstanding baseball. So I think the biggest challenge is, is to getting those recruits here and understanding that everything they need to become a successful baseball player is here. We're playing a great, great conference. We have all the facilities that we need. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we have that opportunity to, you know, play the Red Sox in spring training, which is outstanding. We play at Fenway Park every two years, which is another great opportunity. So um, I think the biggest challenge will always remain just recruiting and get those top players here to, to come play for us. If, if I could just um, jump on that, I think one of the reasons why Mike may have less challenges moving from assistant to head coach uh, in this particular situation is a tribute to Coach McPhee. And as he alluded to, you know, uh, Coach McPhee's given Mike a lot of latitude with respect to the day-to-day -day operations of the program, and I certainly took notice of that. And when I, when I asked uh, his colleagues in compliance, in student athlete support services, in the business office, um, you know, how has Mike done and how do you feel about him taking over in this role? You know, it was unanimous that he has comported himself like a person that is capable of being a head coach of a program. And I think that's a tribute to Mike, but it's also a tribute to Coach because he gave him that, that responsibility and that flexibility because I think, and, and Coach can speak to this himself, but I, always, I think he always felt like Mike had an opportunity to be an outstanding head coach. And I'll back that up a little bit. Um, uh, Peter also in the athletic department in the university has to take a lot of credit here too. Uh, for the first time in the history of the program, uh, last year we were fully resourced um, to compete at the level that we're playing. Uh, that is just an enormous uh, a gift from the university and from Peter, uh, Peter's leadership in making sports like baseball competitive with uh, the kind of competition that we, ha we, we, we will face. And I, I know Brian, uh, the soccer coach, men's soccer coach, feels very similar to me uh, in that our sports uh, can go on and, and, and hopefully compete on a national level. And uh, Mike is so ready to step forward and be a head coach. Um, a few years ago when I knew that this time was coming, I did give uh, Mike uh, and his good friend at Virginia Tech, Pat Mason, a charge to sort of, you know, bring the program to modern day status. And it's just been a, a remarkable um, seven years since Mike has been here and what he's accomplished uh, in doing that. Um, and, and again, Peter mentioned that just the day-to-day -day operations, learning that is so critical uh, to the to Mike as a head coach, and he will he will seamlessly transition uh, into the head job uh, immediately. He, he already really has, for all intents and purposes, uh, become uh, co-head coach, if you want to call it. So, he, he, he it, the future is so bright here. So there's no doubt. I mean, we're coming off a pretty exciting year, 31 wins. Um, and over the last four years, each year, the win total has increased by at least five wins each year. So there's, there's great momentum. What's, what's been the key to that success uh, for both of you? 36, is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> no, not applying any pressure. Sorry. Uh, it, it, does, it does go back to 2009 when the resources um, began to uh, increase in the program. And Mike and our assistant coaches, uh, Kevin Cobb and Jeff Vigers, they are the ones on the road recruiting the athletes that are currently in this program. Those, they recruited every athlete uh, that was a member of this team last year. So again, that kind of credit, you know, that, that's where programs are built on the road, doing that you know, never-ending job of scouting, evaluating, bringing players into the program. So Mike has, has a great, great head start. I want to jump in there, Matt, too. Sure, Again, I think a couple other things with that and the success and why we keep trending up, I think, is 
is just the overall change in culture with the university, within the department, uh, sense of pride in what we're doing and feeling better about uh, where the program's headed, and mainly because of these guys right here. You know, this, this group of guys and the guys we had the last couple of years have turned that corner, and they understand that what it takes to win now and the commitment to, to doing that, and so it's all the things that Coach said with Kevin and Jeff doing all the work as assistant coaches, and, and all the support now that we've had from the university and the athletic department. And then you get the right guys in here, like these guys that, that believe in it, that want to be a change of the, part of the change of the culture, that want to win, that want to win a tournament game, that want to win a conference championship, and eventually get into a regional. So I think it's not one thing. It's all the factors that, that Coach had mentioned. And again, these guys changing the culture and realizing this is, this is a reality now. And this, it's going to happen. Any other questions? We're back. Tom. Yeah, Mike, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, any chance in the foreseeable future you might be adding a fishing uh, coach? <laughs> a le a left-handed one? <laughs> uh, well, a couple so, of parts of that. That's, that's a loaded question. question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, our pitching coach is right here. I don't think he would. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I he, yeah, he could volunteer maybe. Um, uh, Kevin's not going anywhere. He's done a great job with our pitchers, and um, so he will continue to do that. And I'll see what the other guy can do if we can get him uh, to do some uh, volunteer speaking and help out with the pavilion. There you go. <laughs> He's learning. He's fundraise, fundraise, fundraise. I love it. Other questions? Not seeing any. Any any other remarks from from the panel? I'm, I'm just really excited uh, having a local guy, someone that grew up in Billerica. Um, his family um, has been so supportive of, of him and his, his uh, siblings, and they love the game. Um, you know, this is a game that that just gets in your your system and it won't let go. And uh, you know, I feel like that. Uh, and I I don't coach it, but having played it and then watching it. It's just um, something special, especially in this market. And um, so the Glavin name, as Coach alluded to, is synonymous with uh, great baseball. And I couldn't be more proud to have uh, this Glavin running our program uh, going forward. That's great. Is, uh... Well, well, I've got a few more minutes on stage here uh, <laughs> before I exit the door. Uh, I'd like to thank, there's some people in this audience that meant so much to me through the 28 years and into the 29th year that are sitting here. And, you know, there's a few I'd like to mention uh, that I can see out there. Um, Dave Norton from the Registrar's Office is one. Uh, Vinnie Lembo and his brother Peter. Um, Vinnie has meant so much to me in the, 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 10, tw the 28 years I've been here. Um, just uh, an enormous resource for me. Uh, Fred Wiseman, been here, an academic uh, support system, just, just a wonderful guy, and does such a great job with our athletes. Jim O'Shaughnessy, whose son is a Hall of Famer, is standing back there. Uh, again, one of our own alumnus here, uh, and, and president and past president of the uh, Varsity Club, and then two absolute legendary people here from Northeastern, um, and Jack Renold and George Makers. Uh, you just can't get more Northeastern than those people, and I, I thank them for the for the years that I've been here uh, and what they've meant to me. So thank you guys. And. Uh uh, it's important for everybody to know that um, this was not meant to be um, a, a, a retirement reception for Coach McPhee because he's got another year here and he's got plenty that he wants to accomplish. No, I mean that sincerely because this is about making sure that everybody knows that Mike is going to be the successor, but there's going to be a time and place for us to pay the appropriate amount of um, homage and gratitude uh, to Coach McPhee for all of his years of service to Northeastern. So. You know, I hope that we'll be back in a similar uh, situation uh, celebrating success on the field, but also to be able to say thank you to Coach when the time comes. Al Poro, you too, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> so, Neil, thank you. Mike, congratulations. Thank you.
Uh, members of the media, uh, our panel will be available if you want to come forward uh, for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Everyone else, we have a reception area uh, set up in the back, so I invite you to stay, uh, enjoy some food, and uh, Neil and Mike and Peter will join us uh, shortly in the reception. But thank you for being here.